Hadouken! Welcome to the second video in this tutorial about how to make a digital copy of an existing room. So in my case, my VR cave. So first thing I'm going to do is go and find some assets for this. If you go to the asset store and you scroll way down to the bottom near pricing, you can actually set the pricing to free and find a variety of great free assets to import into your Unity project. So I'm going to look for some walls and some furniture so I can easily drag and drop those things into my existing project. And you see here I found some office furniture. And when you want to install this, just like we did with the Steam VR plugin last time, you can click on the download button. That'll download the assets. And then you can import them. And you'll get a little pop-up that tells you what you're important. Just hit import all and those will be available for your project. So I'm going to do a little shopping here and grab some other assets as well. Here's a startup pack with a variety of different assets. This is a cabin which has some nice looking furniture. And finally I grabbed uh, some dungeon low polygon assets. All of these are free to use which is fantastic. And I'll show you in a second how to put them into your project. This is where we left the project last time. If I go down to the assets now and type in something like wall, I get to see a bunch of the walls I just imported with those various asset packs. Once I find one I like, I just have to click on it and drag it and drop it into the scene and it snaps to the plane, which is really handy. The wall is really just another 3D object, so I can scale it and move it and place it wherever I like. I put on my headset, went into the scene, and I've just built a little room out of those walls. And I wanted to show you that once those walls are there, they act as you'd expect them to. So they act as a barrier when I try to teleport through them. I can touch the walls and my hand collides with them, just as you'd expect. Notice that even though the teleport area extends outside of the walls, I can't reach them because whenever I try to teleport, that little red circle goes up the wall instead of through it, so it acts as a real barrier. I also tossed in this lamp and table, and if I try to grab them, I can't move them, but I can collide with them. This is how they behave out of the box, but just like we did with the cube in the last tutorial, we can add interactions to these objects later. Now I'm going to show you how I built this room, and one of the first things you have to recognize when you start using Unity is every unit in Unity is typically considered a meter. It doesn't have to be a meter. You can redefine the units to be whatever you like. By default, it's easier if you just consider every unit to be one meter. So I create a little table which has all five of the walls of my room in feet, and then I convert them to inches and convert those inches to meters. And now when I size the walls of my projects, I can refer to this table with the meters to get the right sizes. There's a little bit of extra math in there. That's just me accounting for the thickness of the walls and the drywall. So you can ignore that, just use the feet times 12 to get your inches. So now I can go ahead and drag and drop a new wall onto the scene. I'm gonna grab the same walls I did last time. Once the wall is in the scene, you'll see here, I actually have some numbers on the sides there, which tell me the number of units, the width, height, and depth are. You might not have those by default, and if you don't have those numbers on your game objects, you can turn them on by going up to Tools, down to Pro Builder, and there's a little option for dimensions. So I'm going to hide them now, but you can hide or show that, and that'll give you the measurements in units. And remember, every one unit you should think of as one meter. There's features within Unity that kind of expect it to be a meter, like gravity and such. And we can talk about that more later. But for now, if you're resizing objects, think in meters, and you can use those dimensions to drag it out. You can also go and turn on a better or more visible grid, and that's in the same menu under Tools, Pro Grid, right there. So that turns on a more visible grid if you're having trouble seeing the default grid. Here, I'm just dragging out the walls, making the right size. I've got an overlay of my table there, so you can see I'm trying to make this one 4.11 units, which would be equivalent to 13.5 feet. And I'm going to do this for every single one of my walls.
So now I've got a room in virtual reality which basically matches the exact same dimensions as my VR cave that I'm building in real life. The room is very simple right now and it's got a long way to go before I can use this for example to host virtual meeting. However getting to this point really wasn't that hard so now let's add some furniture to the room and just play around with it a bit. Because we imported a bunch of free assets I could just start looking for things like for example a desk. So just by typing the word desk in there I get a variety of computer desks. I also have a desk lamp so I could grab and drop a lamp in there if I want. I tried looking for flowers, couldn't find a flower but if you look for pot there are actually plant pots there. So I'm going to take a plant pot, drop that onto the table, and then I'll try and find a computer. So if I type in computer and monitor, I should be able to find some things to match and we'll put a computer onto that desk as well. Now remember, all of these are free assets. Nothing here I paid money for. So getting started to play with Unity is really pretty cheap and pretty easy. Now let's hit play, I'm gonna put on my headset and jump in and you see, here's a desk, here's all the objects. Immediately I can tell they're collidable. I can't grab or interact with them, but I can touch the objects and they'll actually collide with my hand, which is great. Let's modify the properties of these objects and add some scripts so we can maybe toss them, throw them around or move them. So I'm going to go to add component and I'm going to add the throwable component. And as soon as I add that component, you can see I get rigid body and interactable right away. So I'm going to do that with every single one of the objects on this desk and then see what happens when I hit play. So here's a problem you might run into when you import some assets. When I hit play here, you'll notice that Everything, the table, the planter, the keyboard, they all just fall right through the floor and that threw me for a loop. I really didn't understand what was going on with that. Now, if you search up on Google, you're going to find people talking about whether there is a collidable mesh or not with these assets. And the easiest way I found to get around that is just to add a different kind of collider to each of the objects. So here I'm going to add a box collider, I'm going to disable the mesh collider, and that works really nicely so that the objects will collide with the floor and they're not going to just fall right through. Now all our objects have a collider, so we're ready to go in and see what we can do with them. Listen here, table. I know you and me have had our differences, but this ends now. <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's a bit weird. I have no idea why the plant is up against the wall like that. But hey, it looks like I can grab things, I can interact with them, they light up in yellow when I get close to them to show that I can pick them up. So that's all working as expected. And then, what? What the hell? I have, I have no idea what happened there either. Um, so I'll have to look into that. But uh, anyways, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoy watching these videos and learning a bit about Unity, I'm making more videos in this series until I finish basically creating a virtual room that I can host meetings in. Thank you for watching, subscribe and comment below and goodbye for now.